let you know that we have crushed last year's numbers. So, um, we know that there are people doing rides right now as well, so I don't anticipate this is the final number, but the number at this point is 154. by far the most Teslas registered for our event. I think double the uh, the highest amount that was out there. Anywhere we had, the yeah, anywhere yes. in the country, Whoa. anywhere in the world actually, because this is a worldwide event. We had way more Leafs than the average event, way more Volts. We have a bunch of one-offs that people aren't going to be able to see everywhere, like Fiat 500Es, Cadillac ELR, a bunch of the Ford offerings as well. There's even uh, a RAV4 electric that was only offered usually on the coast, and so we got one of those here. So it's just fantastic to see the support. Uh, thank you so much for coming out. I'm going to continue to come and see people roll in, and then uh, you'll get an email blast from me um, next week letting you know about webinars we have coming up and then the official count. Thank you all for coming out today to celebrate uh, the DFW National Drive Electric Week. Uh, we have some staff going around right now to get an official vehicle count. We're trying to break the Texas record for the most number of electric vehicles in one location which is actually our own record that we set last year and the year before. Um, so thank you again for coming out. I'm going to take a minute and introduce um, Council Member Mike Taylor. He's a member of our Regional Transportation Council at the North Central Texas Council of Governments. Um, he's a lifelong resident of Northeast Tarrant County and a Colleyville resident since 1984. He has, definitely has a working knowledge of economic development and its impact on Northeast Tarrant County and our local businesses. Um, he supported transportation infrastructure improvements throughout the Metroplex for the past two decades and believes that mobility and economic development are interdependent in Northeast Tarrant County and the Metroplex if they're too cross Um So I don't want to take up too much more of your time and I'm going to turn it over to Councilman Taylor. Thank you, folks. <laughs> I don't know if any of you have allergies, but welcome to the crowd if you do. Uh, so uh, bear with me as we get through this. And I thank you for the 45 minutes you've allotted, but we won't take that long. I don't have any comments to make. So if you're out there in the sun, you might want to come in. But I do, do, do want to say and applaud the, uh, all of you, the leadership initiative that all of you have shown by being here today. Many of you are actually leaders in the community. You really believe in the electric vehicle uh, initiative and where it's gone, and you've been part of getting it here. I'm going to give you some stats today that are going to make you very pleased. And the reason I'm proud of the stats is I'm talking to the stats. You are what make the statistics, and that's exciting when you get to see people face to face and all the cars sneaking in here uh, because they're so quiet when they're running. If you're here to learn about the EVs or here to share your story with other EV owners, you're part of the change the transportation system for the better. And that's what most people are surprised to learn about North Texas is home to the electric vehicle EVs more than any other major metropolitan area in this state. We had 100, as I remember, we had 128 EVs here last year. I have it from good sources. We're going to blow that away today. So that's what I'm EVs save families time and money by not having to stop at the gas station and go down there. And boy, with what we've seen with Hurricane Harvey and what's going on in Florida, and keep those folks in your prayers, guys. This is a long-term deal right here. And boy, you think sometimes we get a little bit just bothered by being inconvenienced about our air conditioner going out for a day or two or the refrigerator. Just put yourself in these folks. They're totally out of their homes, and some of them won't be able to return to it. They'll be moving on somewhere. But that's the great thing about the EV market is it costs less to maintain. It's cheap in cost uh, is, is of electricity in Texas. It means you'll be spending much less for fuel, especially if you have one of those plans where you get free electricity at night. How many of you do that? So you're utilizing it. Just be aware there are plans that from certain hours throughout the night when we're all on, on low load, it's not peak times, they're actually giving you free electricity so you can keep your car charged. That technically means to me it costs you nothing but maintenance and upkeep to drive your EVs. So more and more electricity is produced by renewables like wind and solar, and that's helping with the, uh, the carbon emissions. EVs improve the economy by using Texas-made electricity, supporting jobs for Texans and keeping revenues local. 
and remember that word, jobs, I'll be back to that in a minute. In contrast, over 80% of the cost of a gallon of gas leaves our local economy. EVs improve the environment, electric drive is three to four times more efficient than a gasoline engine and produces fewer emissions. Texas electricity grid is cleaner than the national average, even considering emissions generated at the power plants. Uh, EVs have a lower emission for overall pollutants. Because if you've talked to somebody about your EV, what's one of the things they say? Yeah, but you're burning emissions to create the electricity to charge your EV. And that, that model has changed quite a bit because of the cost <clears throat> of crude coming down so much. So keep that in mind. For this event alone, the first 117 EV owners recorded over 3 million miles driven. Million with an M. Okay, let's have a clap. I can hear an idea from all the Baptists, all right? Amen. EVs currently on North Texas roads are known to reduce nitrogen oxide called NOx emissions by over six tons a year, reduce carbon dioxide emissions by more than 37,000 tons a year, which is equivalent of about 3,500 homes. That's what you're doing out there. Thank you. The FW area is a non-attainment for ozone, and that's where people like myself come in. We're privileged to serve all of us. And you, uh, uh, let us do this because we're non-attainment for ozone, uh, which means that we do not meet the Environmental Protection Agency's design, uh, designated standards <coughs> excuse me, to protect human health and the environment. About half of all ozone-forming pollution comes from cars and trucks. So EVs are very important in reducing this pollution and achieving the ozone standard by providing a zero emission transportation option. As a member of the Regional Transportation Council, I'm especially aware of the impact that ozone pollution has on our region. As you can tell, I'm an as I grew up as an asthmatic. I have, thanks to medications today, I can be out here. But if you've ever known and remember the days when guys, when the ozone's high now, you kind of go back there. Stinging, stinging up your eyes, <clears throat> just irritations. Sometimes you feel like you can't get a full breath of air. We don't have those problems as much anymore because we've cleaned up our environment so much. These cars make a big difference in that. So if you want to know why I'm, I'm kind of a believer to the core, that's the reason. The other reason is technology. <clears throat> But achieving ozone attainment is important to the future of our region, the economic future. Without that, the region lose, risks losing. I want to read these notes. What will happen if we don't follow the EPA guidelines? We will lose our federal match of monies. Now, that money goes up there in the form of your gas tax at the pump. And the way we get a dollar back is that we actually put 20% of our state money here in our local dollars with that we get an 80% match on these projects. In your local cities, counties, we actually chip in and that's how we qualify and get projects up. So if you're wondering why you're driving around all the time and you're looking at barrels and construction all over the region, that's because we're growing at that rate by 20 40, which is only another 23 years from now, you can almost take 50% of the people out here and add them again, just adjusted for population increase. And that impacts your roads, guys. If you think it's bad now, we're trying to just keep up with inflation and growth alone. So whenever you have that type of impact, everybody wants a vehicle as well. You're seeing a lot of the infrastructure improve as far as adding transit issues and options. EVs are one of those because they're not polluting. But if we don't keep the uh, zero emissions, if we don't meet the EPA standards, that's really what I want to talk to you about. I think I'm just going to shut this. If we don't do that, I mentioned the word jobs. This is where it hits on because I see a lot of young people out here. We lose companies wanting to come to this region that bring good, high-paying jobs, career jobs, not only for you and me, but for our kids. Most people in a region this size, you can expect your kids can stay here themselves and raise their families and your grandkids. And so that's why it's important to keep jobs coming to the region. If we don't do that, the fact is we have had companies leave the area. They've left the Austin area, didn't go there, I should say, didn't leave because of the fact they looked at the congestion. And thanks to Prop 1 and Prop 7 over the last three years that we voted for and approved, 
at least our legislature has opened up some some reasonable amount of funding that's helped us get these projects up. And that's why you're seeing a lot of this stuff coming out of the ground. Without that, if you hadn't voted for it, you wouldn't see near the congestion in construction. You'd see the congestion sitting in a parking lot out there in those crowded lanes. So that's the reason that I been blessed to be able to come out here and talk to you the last two years. I say Representative Capriglione was with me last year and he deserves praise for being one of our transportation advocates down on the legislature. <laughs> he were here, I will tell you that, don't tell him I told you that, he'll get a big head, alright? But he's a class act, he knows what he's doing and he understands gridlock and that we've got to pay for the growth of the infrastructure here. So if you see Geo say thank you for what you do down there. He needs to hear that. All of our legislators that support transportation need to hear it. So when you look at where we are, a lot of statistics, but if you probably already know them, the fact is you are the statistics. That's what's exciting about this event. Look at all these cars. I've been telling people for the last two years, you've got to go out to Grapevine Mills for this thing. You've never seen this many plug-ins in your life. And they're out here. And if you look, and I'll just tell you what I was going to do this morning. I went to research. Being a financial advisor, I follow companies. Following companies means you see a lot of the future. It's what they let us know, what they put out there. <coughs> do you realize that with BMW, uh, Lincoln by 2023 will have all their models be offered in hybrids? Uh, Volkswagen just introduced for production by 2023 seven new models for all you gray hairs out there they're going to have an electric micro bus we will be going back in time but we'll do it right this time all right it'll be emissions free and i think that's going to be a hot model you look at what bmw has just announced there's uh, x7 which will be a, a ev so and I counted up just in recent announcements in the last few months from major manufacturers, over 30 new models that will be production cars, all right? And these are good looking vehicles. I have to compliment Tesla. The first time I drove a Tesla several years ago, I knew this business was real. A lot of people thought, look at how they have changed the style of the Volt. These are attractive cars and people want to buy them. They want to own them and they want to drive them and they want to show them off to their neighbors. And I will tell you that when I got behind a Tesla and I nailed it and I realized it had the power of many of its combustion muscle car peers, I said this industry will now go somewhere. And it, what it does is it's made all of the vanilla brands have to step up the game. So you and I benefit from that. The first time they make a truck with a battery in it, I'll be in on it, all right? So I'm not getting out of my truck. Listen, thank you for what you do. Thank you for having us out here. And on behalf of the uh, other members, there's 40 of us from the 10, 17 county area that sit on the RTC. And we represent you, they're all elected officials. Then you have the three heads of the uh, DART, Denton County Transit Authority, and the Fair Road Transportation Authority. Those heads also, so there's 43 voting members of the Regional Transportation Council. I represent 10 cities, and Grapevine is one of them. Polyville Keller all the way up to Rono. And I thank you for that opportunity, sir. But we're focused on transportation, keep people moving, so. We'll probably take half of you off and we'll make the other half happy today. Tomorrow we'll do just the opposite, all right? So thank you again. Keep up the good work.